Hey everybody, what's up? Welcome to the Cookland channel. I'm David and welcome to my kitchen. Uh, if it's your first time here, welcome. And if you've been here before, make yourself comfortable. You know where everything's at. Uh, you know what we're doing today, right? We're cooking in Brooklyn. That's what we do. So today, uh, I'm going to consider this another Cookland classic. Um, working with a classic dish. I got a request from one of my uh, viewers, one of my fans. And she happens to be my child. <laughs> she's one of my creative consultants. She's my camera girl. And she's my everything. So she asked me, Dad, can you make a uh, chicken pot pie? I love chicken pot pie. Do you love chicken pot pie? Have you ever had chicken pot pie? Have you ever made chicken pot pie? So good. So classic. Um, and actually very easy. And um, follow along. And let's see what we get into. We're gonna do chicken pot pie. Be right back. It's kind of like a, a repurposed dish because usually I will make uh, like a whole roasted chicken on like a Sunday and a chicken pot pie will usually come as a leftover, you know, as a reinvention of, of, of the uh, whatever's left of the chicken. So that chicken is already uh, delicious, roasted and tasty. You know what I'm saying? It's pre-done. So... I don't really have to worry about this step. So, so this way, since I'm doing it from the, the raw state, um, I decided to go with the chicken breast instead of like maybe a thigh because it'll cook quicker. Um, takes on the seasoning pretty fast and, and, and it'll cook quick and it'll be, you know, it'll stand up to, uh, to what we're going to put it through. So I'm just going to cube off the rest of these and um, and then we're just going to be ready to keep it rolling all right so our chicken is done butchering take care of that a little bit later so now we're going to get uh, to season all right so I'm going to spread this out in this pan so uh, we can get to everything at once we can uh, make this work short so I got everything all spread out so I'm just gonna wash my hands so I can handle these you got to keep your hands clean anytime you handle chicken anytime you handle raw chicken you got to make sure you keep your hands clean use the hottest water you can uh, stand soapy water Get your hands clean because you're going to want to uh, cross-contaminate other stuff in your kitchen. Definitely a no-no. So, we're just going to build a little uh, rub for this chicken. A base for, um, for this one. And this will be, we're building flavor here. So, this chicken is going to be, the seasoning here is going to be the base, you know, for the entire pot pie, right? So, because we're going to start with the chicken. So, we're going to just build a little rub. I've been asked by... Uh, Oh, please. I've been asked by plenty of people to measure. Cooking for me is, is so much, cooking for me is so much of a, uh, uh, just an expression, a self-expression that um, sometimes I forget, you know, this is kind of instructional, you know, um, it's, it's demonstrational, it's instructional. So at the end of the day, uh, you want to know how much how much, how much. Um, so let me try, I'm, 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 I'm working on myself as an individual <laughs> and as a, uh, uh, as a provider. So I'm working on myself, so I'm gonna try my best to measure stuff and give you those measurements. And also um, I'll try to 
you know, take the time to maybe write some of these recipes down. A lot of the stuff is just coming from my my house of squirrels up here running around, and you know, things that I've seen, things that I've heard, things that I've read, uh, things that I, I just want to try, things that I just, you know, that are really just an expression. So sometimes I don't have recipes, not one. I don't have recipes. I just do stuff uh, according to what I have. Uh, sometimes I don't have all the ingredients, whatever, to make this classic thing or that classic thing. So, you know, um, I just work with what I have and, you know, I work with what I feel like. So I'll try to be uh, more transparent. Transparency is good, right? See what's going on in D.C., right? Transparency, right? So here's a teaspoon. This is going to build a little rub. Here's a teaspoon of salt. And this is kosher salt. I always use kosher salt because it's uh, it's bigger. The, the the pieces are bigger, and you're using less salt. You know, even a one uh, a teaspoon of kosher salt is less salt than a teaspoon of just regular table salt or you know the, the very fine salt. That's a lot of salt. A teaspoon of that salt is a lot. It's a lot uh, has a lot more sodium. So I like to use. The kosher salt, I like the way it, it, it sticks to the meat. I like the way how it's a little bit less sodium than, you know, than the regular conventional salt. So, teaspoon. I'm trying, people. I'm trying. It's killing me. <laughs> teaspoon of, uh, of black pepper. Cracked black pepper. Um, and a lot of times when I build rubs, depending on, on, you know, what ingredients are there, I try to keep things a little bit equal. And try to get this teaspoon of paprika in here. Oh, don't! All right. Oh, I'm It's a teaspoon and a bit of paprika. Measuring, measuring, gotta measure. <laughs> right? And. I love garlic, teaspoon and a little bit more. I'm, gonna, I'm matching the paprika, right? A little bit more than a teaspoon of uh, granulated garlic. And finally, yeah, finally, I'm just gonna grab some thyme. This is some dried thyme. I always have, I always buy more thyme than I need. I never, I should know by now that I have, like when, when I have fresh thyme that I wanna use. Um, sometimes I don't remember that I have fresh thyme. So, and time is like a dollar. So I always buy it or, you know, somebody else bought some time and I didn't know it was at, in the house. So I ended up buying time and then we had, we have a, like loads of fresh time. So we never have to buy the dry stuff. Cause I just, when I finish using it, I, I lay it out, keep it in the package and, and let it dry. And then I just stick it in a bottle like this. And then all you gotta do is just kind of rub it back and forth. And then you get all the little time leaves right off like that. Um, super easy and it'll save you some money. You don't have to um, worry about, you know, paying three, four ninety nine dollars for a jar of time when you can do this yourself. And from, you know, from like a dollar bunch of time, whatever you have left over, you can always um, use it, reuse it. And even you can use the stalks over, you can uh, put it in stock. Um, to flavor stocks and um, you know anything you can put it you know get a bunch of that stick it in your um in your Sunday chicken or in your um in your uh, your, your turkey for Thanksgiving you know what I'm saying it's a, it's, it's a huge pack of flavor and you can save some some bucks that way by drying your own um, so I'm just gonna give this a quick little combine so about a teaspoon of salt pepper, paprika, granulated garlic, and a few rubs of thyme. That's like, you know, not a teaspoon, but you know, it's, it's a, a bit of thyme, right? You measure everything. So we're gonna season. And the reason I put it in this pan is so that we can hit everybody real quick. Right? Bam, and one more little pinch. I'm gonna have leftover seasoning, which is good because I can use this another day. Stick it in a little jar. Stick it in a little jar, stick it in a little Tupperware container, whatever, and 
in our whole seasoning. Also, we're still gonna be adding more ingredients, so we're gonna be building, we're gonna be building these flavors, right? I'm just gonna go in here with a little bit of canola oil, and this is just a few squirts. And what that'll do is kind of help the seasoning stick to the chicken, right? And it'll lubricate it up a little bit so it doesn't, you know, less chance of it sticking, sticking uh, to the pan and stuff when we start cooking it. And, you know, that sort of thing. So, real quick, you know, it's a weeknight. You got to keep it moving, you know what I'm saying? Real quick, chicken is seasoned. And you got to get over to the stove. Got us a nice hot cast iron skillet. A little bit of oil and I let the skillet get a little bit hot in advance just to keep things rolling and we're gonna go right in and spread the chicken out so that it kind of cooks evenly you don't want too much if it looks like too much chicken in the pan then you can do this in batches definitely do this in batches if you think it's too much as soon as it starts cooking though, and it's cubed up like this, it's going to shrink a bit. So I think I can get away with one batch. All in. Now what I'll do is, I'll constantly move this around, just so we get a kind of an even cook. Shouting a little bit over the sizzle. The good part about chicken breast, it takes almost no time to cook. So about five, six minutes the most. You can pull this. I'm just gonna get it in a bowl. And then there's another there's another part of cooking to this one. We put once we put this in the oven, um, once we combine it with the other ingredients that we're about to deal with now, but get it in the oven, it's gonna cook some more. So you don't want to overcook chicken breast too much because um, it tends to dry and also tends to get tough so I would undercook this chicken a little bit at this point so I would say you know five minutes tops and put it to the side that way um, it's still gonna be kind of cooking in its own in its own heat right here and then we have another step of cooking to do. Whatever's here in the pan is good liquid. This has good flavor. I'm just going to put that to the side right here with the chicken. And we're going right back in this, this cast iron skillet. A little bit of canola oil. Um, trying to move things along. It's rapid old, right? And I've got some mushrooms. I'm trying, I'm trying my best, I'm trying my best here. So this is a package of mushrooms and I'm gonna show you how many uh, mushrooms is what. So these are pre-sliced uh, baby portobello mushrooms. And that's one cup, get out. Measuring y'all, <laughs> we're gonna be measuring two cups. If everybody would get out. I love mushrooms, um, so it's gonna be a lot and stuff when I make it because they, you know, they, they shrink. Three cups of baby portobellos. Got a little bit left over. The half, three and a half cups, or one package of like this. Cool. You give that a little stir. A little toss. The flavor coming off of the pan will season this up a little bit. That oil that's in there will help it stick. I'm just gonna get a pinch, one pinch of our uh, our pre-made seasoning. So we flavor in layers. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. You thought we was gonna get away without garlic? You thought wrong. We got three cloves of minced garlic. 
right in there. You know I can't cook without garlic. Come on, y'all. Come on. Really? Here comes a can of corn. Whole can. This is two cups of frozen carrots. I measured it. I swear I measured it. And we're gonna do the same two cups of cut green beans. Watch me measure this, y'all. One. Two. And whatever spilled, whatever spilled, that counts as two. That's two. And these that are left behind. I measured it. Two cups a piece. And I'm gonna do for one nice pinch of our seasoning. The salt in the seasoning is gonna help unfreeze this. The uh unfreeze. That's not now Jesse, you know that's not a word. It's gonna help to thaw the frozen vegetable out, right? So I'm gonna mix this around, let everybody uh Get introduced. Get familiar. And um, I'm going to cover this up real quick just so we can get it steamed and cooked cook through as uh, quickly as possible. Uh, it's getting late and everybody's getting hungry. Okay, full disclosure. I'm going to toss in here. Oh, you guys are killing me. I have to measure this. Where is my super soup? Where is my measuring cup? I had it. I see it. It was right here. Where is my super soup? Oh. My super soup is where it belongs. Okay. I'm going to add half a cup of chicken stock, chicken broth. And that's gonna create the steam that I need to defrost the vegetables, soften everything up a little bit, and then bring us that much closer to completion. Full disclosure here. And measuring. All right, after about three minutes, everything should be pretty much defrosted. So. I need this pan for the next step. My cast iron is very important for this, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna spill this out. Excuse me, pardon me. I'm gonna let this heat up a little bit. And just a couple squirts of canola oil. Four tablespoons of butter. Turn that down a little bit so it doesn't so it doesn't burn. And I'm going with one, two, three, four tablespoons of flour, all-purpose flour. We are building a room which is gonna be, it's just a fancy French term, French's term for this uh, solution. Uh, cook butter and flour equal parts. And then, we'll get in here, hold on. Let's tighten this up. Let's tighten this up. Let me see what's going on. Get you. I'm gonna get you all situated. There we go. So, important part of a room, keep it moving. A whisk, which I'm gonna. 
do the proper thing. I need something to hold this pan so I don't burn my fingers. All right. So what we need to do is just whisk this until all the flour is combined with the butter and a little bit of oil. And then the longer you cook it, the darker it gets. And the darker it gets, kind of the more flavorful it is. So sometimes you want something with a deep, dark flavor like um, like gumbo. Sometimes you, you, you want to get a nice dark roux that's like caramel color, peanut butter color. I like to go for just about, just about peanut butter color. So I'm just gonna keep whisking this. I was making a lot of noise, right? <laughs> I'm gonna keep, let it cook for a little bit and then you whisk it just to keep it moving. You know what I'm saying? Keep it from clumping up and stuff. Get the corners, right? And this is gonna help, this is gonna build that gravy. I'm saying? The gravy of the uh, of the pot pot. That that keeps that sticks everything together. That's like the you know the glue. So we get into about get into that peanut butter color, light caramel. It's light skin. It's light skin rule. So I'm gonna hit this now. Lord. One cup of chicken broth. Zoom it out. I said, zoom it out. Let's get some of, let's get some of me now. Some me time. So we hit this with one cup of chicken broth. And then what we want to do, just start stirring, combining this together, right? And then you're gonna see, I'll get you back in here. When we're stirring, you see those spaces? That means it's too tight. We want, we want it loose. We want it, we want a gravy that we can set all of these other cooked ingredients in, right? So that's too tight. We're gonna let it cook, let it warm up a little bit while we stir. And then here's another cup of that chicken broth. And the full disclosure, our uh, flame is about high. So we want to reduce this quickly. Get everything combined quickly. Get all these lumps out of here. And then once this, once this comes up to a boil, and we're stirring, and we're watching it, we're smelling, um, once this comes up to a boil, we're gonna reduce it a little bit. And reducing is just letting some of the liquid uh, evaporate on this high heat, let some of this liquid evaporate, and then also um, thickening, thickening it up. So we reduce the, uh, we reduce the roux, and now we're making this uh, this like gravy for the uh, for the rest of the ingredients. We reduce it so that it's nice and thick. Um, there's some residual liquid um, in the vegetables. There's some residual liquid in the chicken that um, will loosen this up some more. So that's why we want we want this to be kind of thick, so that when it takes on the extra liquid, it can stand up to it. And we won't have a, a runny pot pie. We want, we want that gravy. If this doesn't tighten up for you, you can always add a little bit of flour. Give it a little bit more body. If you don't think it's enough gravy to cover everything and, 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 and mingle, you can add a little bit more um, chicken stock. Add a little bit more flour, bulk it up a little bit so that you know so that you're balanced. We're getting this. 
I'm going to season this. A good pinch of our, uh, our pre-made seasoning. Just to make sure in every step, you know, we're seasoned. We just had flour and butter. We didn't have any salt or anything like that in there. So we want this vehicle, we want this part of it to have a little bit of seasoning too, right? So, let's go. Cut this down a little bit, and then I'm going to start combining. I'm going to put half of our veg. And you see what I was talking about? All of this gravy. I'm not, I don't want all of this. Not yet. Not unless I see that it needs more. Not unless I see that it needs more liquid. I don't want all that gravy. I want this kind of dry in here. Uh, the vegetables, I mean, vegetables are liquid. You know, they're, they're full of water. So they're gonna put a lot of water into this situation. And we don't want, um, we don't want a, a, a soggy pot pie. We want a nice thick gravy coating everything. And, uh, and delicious, you know what I'm saying? That hearty, that's the word I'm looking for. We want it, we want it to be hearty, okay? So, this is looking good right here. There's a lot more chicken and veg, so I'm going to put some more veg. I'm not making a huge pot pie. So, I don't want to make too much filler. Well, you know what? I'm going to figure out what to do with it. And what I'm going to do is move a little bit of veg. Everybody in. Alright. And come on. I ain't got no crew. It's just me. It's just me. All alone. Here we go. So as you can see, our gravy. Is holding up very nicely. See that? Our gravy is holding up very nicely in this mixture. I'm going to turn this up a little bit so it will reduce some more and tighten up a little bit. And we are almost ready to get on to the next step, which is going to be O-V-E-N. Just let that tighten up a little bit more. And back in a moment. Full disclosure and measurement. Here is a quarter cup of heavy cream. And that's gonna send this into thick, rich heaven. Of course, if you don't do cream, if you don't do milk, you can substitute with coconut milk or nothing. You don't, you don't need it at this point if you've already uh, adjusted for your needs. I do the cream. I'm combining all of this together. Oh man, it's luscious now. Now it's luscious. We are inching closer to the oven, inching closer to the finish line. I've got here a pizza dough, a pizza crust, uh, puff pastry. Um, you find it in the supermarket. By your biscuits. All right, I've got this pizza crust. I went into the supermarket and all of the pie crust was done. And we improvise. Pie crust, pizza crust, it's the same thing. Now, I'm just gonna unroll. We've got a couple of holes in it, no biggie. I'll fill the hole up and I just want to stretch this out a little bit. I was going to transfer, man, eh, I'm not even going to show you. I was going to transfer the pot pie to a baking dish. And then I said, what better vessel to bake off this pie than this cast iron skillet? So cool, so versatile. 
and so ready. It's ready. Everything is in here. I don't have to do Nathan, Frankie. So I'm just going to kind of hold this and stretch it right over. You're going to have some excess. And I can fold it under. I can cut it off. Oh, look at that. It's getting thin right there. Um, and I don't want too much excess, so I'm going to pull some of that off. And you know what? I'm not even going to put it over. I'm not going to overlap it. I'm going to underlap it. I'm just going to leave it right in here. Stretch this part here. And take off some of this excess because it's going to be too doughy. And it's, you know, you'll have contact with this, uh, with the sauce, with the, uh, the gravy. What has contact with the gravy will be a little bit uh, doughy at those points. And then this is a little thin here. So what I'll do is get this all together, push it together, and as much as I can, if I can, okay. It doesn't want to, it's, it's high, high in uh, elasticity. So it doesn't want to uh, cooperate with the uh, the program. I'll make some spinners. <laughs> Being Jamaican has its advantages. I'm gonna make some spinners. I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make some spinners out of this BBC, all right? And then decorative spinners. Spinner is a type of a dumpling, all right? So I'll decorate this pie a little bit. Make some spinners, and then. Stretch out, man. Stretch out. A little bit of decorative. Who says I can't bake and decorate? I can do it. I can do it. A little decorative element to this. Just with our excess. What are we going to do with this other than that? All right. So we have that. Excuse me. I'm going to put a little hole right here and a little hole right here just to let some of that steam escape while it's baking. And I've got the oven at 400. This is ready to go in. Let me just pull this to the, try to pull it right to the edge a little bit. And this is going straight into a 400 degree oven. center shelf for about 20 minutes or so. I'm going to wait until I see that crust get golden brown and delicious. That way I know it's cooked through. Everything else on the bottom is combined and cooked through. All the veg is uh, defrosted and everything is melted together. That wonderful luscious gravy that we made with the roux. And we're just waiting for the top of this pie to crust up. And then we're going to be eating in Brooklyn. Looking at my roly, it's about that time. I got no roly. I can smell it. Oh! Oh, yes. Ready, 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 ready. Now, let me tell you something about golden brown and delicious. This is the definition right here. This is hot, bubbling, and ready. Check this out. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm coming. Hold on. Here it is. Chicken pot pie. We cooked in Brooklyn. Now it's time to taste. Uh, just going to run in here and grab a nice spoon. Get some of this thick crust. Now let's try to get all the way down to the bottom so I can get everything. Oh boy. Look at that. Oh man. Now I'm going to run in here. Let's take some of that. Put it right there. Bubbling. <laughs> I couldn't find a word. <laughs> Bubbling hot and delicious. Uh, thanks for watching. 
This has been Chicken Pot Pie, a cooking classic. And oh, let me get us a taste and show y'all. Let me see. Because y'all know I don't be bull. I don't be bull. I don't be BSing. Let's give this a nice taste. I'm going to get a little crust. It is hot. I'm going to do the ha ha. Super hot. That's it. When I tell you, it was everything. It's everything. Everything you need, and you know, this is just classic comfort. Everything you need uh, in one, and and got it done in one in one pot. Which is awesome for me because I'm usually making a huge mess around here. So this is awesome. Um, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And tell a friend to tell a friend. Be cooking in Brooklyn. Yo, dinner's ready.